Hello and welcome to Save Your Bacon, an advice comedy podcast where we think we're helping. My name is Will. And my name is Zane, or better known in the biz as Zane Chainsaw. And just to show you how much we care, we have a paper master's degree taped up on our walls loosely uh, in therapy just to show that we're both professional and self-sufficient. That's true, Zane. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Zane is a is a amalgam of our mindscape from about two minutes before recording when I accidentally misspelled his name in our shared Google document. So in case you're thinking you missed some like cool, uh, super awesome hit uh, inside joke that we have between us, you were wrong. It's just a <laughs> dumb type of gear between the two of us over the internet. <laughs> so yeah, like we said, we're an advice comedy podcast. I um I actually want to start off with a, a new bit. Um, just for the whole show in general, Ooh, um, that okay, I asked the right. audience to help me with my life because I suck at it. Um, I overdid <laughs> a prank this week, <laughs> and um, and now the person's mad at me, and they didn't think it was funny or cool and didn't want to retaliate in any way. So if you have any oh, ideas gosh. on how to make it up to somebody who's really um, not too thrilled about the horrible prank you pulled on them that ended up being way meaner than you expected because you got hyped up by your friends in order to do it, um, let me know. Give me a <laughs> ring. Man, send I, us uh, send us your stuff, and we'll read it off uh, just in case you think you might have a better way to do this. Because I don't want to ask Zane. That might make him uncomfortable. Speaking <laughs> over uh, speaking over you really quickly, I was going to say yeah. speaking of. <laughs> That's a fantastic segue. You do it. Speaking of, I, A, I love this as an opener, asking the, <laughs> asking the audience for advice. The first thing they hear on a advice podcast, hey, give me some advice. Please I'm help like, us. Oh, oh I thought clueless. you were going to answer my advice, but okay, cool. Whatever. That's a we great idea. We do both idea. here. We do we'll, it all. We'll, we'll answer Will's dilemma at the beginning of next episode and also give you another dilemma to help us with uh and then jump right into questions speaking of uh this situation i've got a great question if you want to hear a great question man the most fluent segue ever please (laughs) (laughs) i couldn't have done it better please give me the question i'm dying (laughs) believe it or not neither could i okay go with the question (laughs) all right all right (laughs) The question is, can you be trespassed from jail? Oh. Can you be <laughs> Can you be trespassed from jail? Is that if it? You, is that <laughs> No, man. Okay, I, good. You've got more. If you refuse to leave jail, what are they going to do? Arrest you and throw you in jail? <laughs> This question comes from, I should have said it earlier, comes from Benjamin Ikuda on Reddit. Thank you uh, for your fantastic question. This is a serious situation. I want you to look yeah. me dead in the eyes wherever you are. This is the are. second home away from home question we've gotten so far about what do I do if I want to make a home in somewhere I'm not supposed to make my home? The thing I'm so confused about right now is can you be trespassed from jail? Not like can, can you be you trespassed be, from zero? Yeah. Like can that they throw real you out word. of there? Are they like, hey, you're you're trespassing on jail property. You're not even in jail. Get out of here. Hey, you're not supposed to be locked up. Get out of here. Um, I mean, if you're talking to some good cops, that'd be the likely, I mean, hopeful answer you'd get. Hey, you're not supposed to be here, pal. That's a wholesome answer, right? Hey, but buddy, like, you're not supposed to be here. Let's say you're in the uh, the area where they all come outside and everybody's out there but they look at you and they're like you're not in uniform wait a minute you're not even in jail get you're out in of blue here jeans. And, get out of here and you're hey blue jeans hey <laughs> shout out to him him hey barry blue jeans get on out of here why don't you <laughs> yeah I, and then that w- <laughs> and then they look at you and they and and you look at them and you say no <laughs> i'm not going anywhere and they say why i ought to and they and then you say what are you gonna throw do you in jail yeah what are you, exactly. what are you gonna do let me stay here <laughs> then i win yeah this is the ultimate <laughs> prankster who just gets it and is just sticking it to every man possible who says <laughs> what are you gonna do throw me in jail again Man, super con man uh, response. I dig it. Thank you to whoever sent this. I, I bet nobody's <laughs> ever thought of this. Nobody. This is Definitely stellar. <laughs> um, but can you trespass? Okay. Question, though. Yeah. Can you trespass in jail? You walk into the station. You say, hello, clerk. I'm here to check myself in. And they say, did you commit a crime? He said, no. I just would love to stay in one of your cells. Um, uh, and they say, no, that would be trespassing. 
Is that the answer you get? Oh, that's absolutely not the answer you get because I can promise you the first thing that they will think. If you say, no, I just want to stay in one of your cells, they're going to say, oh, an escape artist on our hands do we have? And they're going to say, yeah, <laughs> uh, sure. A magician, Mr. Houdini, come show <laughs> uh, us your work. Mr. Houdini who done it, Derry Doheny from, oh, almost from Drake and Josh, except I said Derry. So think of a milk carton with like the weird hair that Harry Houdini had and chains on his legs i wish now, i had any clue of what you were talking about same now imagine this person <laughs> imagine this person exactly as i described him Derry doheny they they were talking to the clerk and they're like sure we'll lock you up for the night you go into your cell and they're like oh they have no idea what's coming to Derry doheny has no idea what's about to happen to him and then and, you sleep and just don't leave and, and then that's you your con and then you sleep and then you wake up and they say you're still here and you say surprised that's you <laughs> that's a, you don't even know it actually the long con you say i actually escaped during the night but i loved the bed so much more than my home bed i broke back in and came back to my cell and and they say that's so i think be. i'll stay that thanks so much tra- idiots yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> thanks for the free bed idiot now when's breakfast you feed me now <laughs> oh foiled again <laughs> And this, it's there's a good thing a we have line. all these extra cells. Is, I was going to say, this is when the camera pans out and it just shows like the hundreds of other magicians that have done this over like the past week. <laughs> it's just, cause yeah, it's just the, that they don't have internet and you could only ask once before you do it, realize it's the answer <laughs> to all your problems, and then you just never ask it again. And that's why this doesn't come up very often because yeah. most jails, the issues that we have with our jail systems right now could really just be solved if we found a way to kick out all these magicians. It really could be, but they uh, they are magic, and they every time we try and get them to leave, um, they blow our minds with some kind of like vanishing lady trick or guessing the right card, and I'm like, ugh, that's some pretty good entertainment. Basically, this is what we need. This just hit me. We need an America's Got Talent going on in prison with all of the magicians Ooh. showing off how good they are in prison, and the winner gets to stay in prison but the losers ah, they gotta go that's they how gotta we go solve home the new crisis that's how we solve the new crisis of too many magicians in our jail cells we host a america's got talent and that gets yep. put towards taxpayer dollars or something i don't know that was a government term because that's what we're talking about i suppose and uh in the meantime it gets rid of all but one magician unless they use magic yeah. to keep one with them and then they get another that's true. If they have an assistant, if they bring in an assistant from the outside, the assistant also gets to be in jail with exactly. them. Exactly. If and they win. that is just the greatest uh, gift you could possibly get. Hey, I have a question that was sent in to us. I, I've told people that um, if you want, you can create uh, usernames. This person chose not to. So guess what? You're getting a good shout out of your real name. Um, <laughs> it better not be Snake Chainsaw. I, I, it's not. TM Zna- that Chainsaw one. Chainsaw says. <laughs> um, no, this is. <laughs> Annie Wagner says. Seriously though, how can I be more hipster? <laughs> Thing is that so all Zane? that there is to the question? No, yeah, that's it. Okay. First off, I love that the implication is you asked Will, "How can I be more hipster?" and he started laughing and you said, "No, ser- seriously, how do I become more hipster? You've got to answer this question for me." And there are a lot of there are a lot of answers to this, but the problem is if I l- rattle off all of these very obvious answers then it's going to become less hipster because everybody that listens to the podcast is going to jump on board and this can become more mainstream so what oh, you yeah, gotta so do we gotta tell them something they don't want to do so that it stays hipster yes i gotta tell i gotta tell the world everything that they will hate to do that so if you do it man is that hipster all right yeah our tip to you is become a villain here's here's <laughs> the first one now this is from a girl right you said is it... yep mm-hmm. all right cool um, wear a speedo when you go sledding. This is a very mm-hmm. big one. Yes. No, but no other girls are gonna want to do that. Nobody's gonna be comfortable doing that. They're gonna. Yeah, say, I tell you what, you do that, it'll be hipster forever, friend. Yeah, hipster forever. Um, another one, another very important one. Uh, whenever you're cooking, 
<laughs> make sure that your window is open and you're yelling, help, help, my cat caught on fire, That's help. Hipster. That's hipster. <laughs> because nobody else is going to want to be screaming for help while they're cooking. Mainly, uh, you'd think, mainly because they're like, oh, I don't have a cat or oh, I don't want to panic the neighbors. It's mainly because people don't want to be disturbed while they're cooking. They don't want anyone coming knocking at the door while they're trying to make some stir fry. They'll be like, ugh, I, man. I'm looking at my stir fry. Now I got to deal with this old guy at the door. No, it's basically just one of those, you know, you got to cause a scene while you're doing something leisurely because nobody else is going to be down for that. Cause a disruption, make people upset. Um, Maybe not directly make people upset. That doesn't have to be your motive. No, that's why you're, that's that's... why you're yelling to the whole neighborhood because nobody knows who you're talking to. (laughs) Yeah. It's not directed then. And then all of them will do that thing where they hear the person being hurt in the middle of the alleyway and nobody responds because they assume everyone else is doing it. So that way there it's a victimless crime. This is a big one though. This is a big one that many people won't do because it's so specific that only one person will ever do it. Which is the epitome of hipster. Yes. This is this is prime hipster. This is the origin, the OG hipster right here. Mm-hmm. You have to. Well, obviously wearing your Harry Potter reading glasses. They can't just be fake Harry Potter glasses. They have to be real reading glasses. They look a little mm-hmm. bit like Harry Potter. You go up to the roof of the smallest building within the largest city near you, and you dump a fake bag... Full of, this is gonna sound so weird. A fake bag full of real money onto the entire street underneath you, and then you yell, "I laced that, suckers! Try and get me now!" And then you fly off in your Goodyear blimp, but don't get very far because Are you, you hit- <laughs> reading off a script. What in the world is happening right now? Dude, I'm good at this, but you don't get very far. You're just making far. stuff yeah. up. Of- you don't get very far because you hit the buildings because, remember, you're in the city, and you're also on the smallest building in that city. As you're wearing you- reading glasses, so you can't see very as- far. <laughs> this is also <laughs> Also, I gotta say that the, pi- the pilot of the blimp was Bugs Bunny, and you should have known better that 2D animation has a rough time piloting 3d vehicles but a good year blimp you're not going to yeah. damage the building at all this is very important no one in the building is going to get hurt but the blimp is gonna go down and as soon as you get down to that bottom floor you got to walk in and you got to ask the first person you see where is the nearest sears i gotta know you gotta lay this on me i gotta all know. right all right <laughs> Are you sticking with me? Because we're almost there. Oh, we're still going good. As soon as... <laughs> I'm telling you, we're getting through this. We are getting through this. As soon as the person tells you where the nearest seer is, because I promise you, they're going to know. As soon as you as soon as you know, you go there, but you knock on the door three times and the person will say, oh, you finally returned because you've been there before in a past life. Because, you know, in past lives, seers were all the rage. As you walk in there, he'll hand you a magical orb. And as soon as he hands you that magical orb, you say, it's not as cool as I remember. And then you walk out and you go home. That's A.B. Hipster. Thanks for, mm-hmm. thanks, for, uh, thanks for asking, Annie. I hope that helps. Yeah. Speaking of very hipster things, uh, I've got a great segue question. Dang, that was good. This is a question off of Reddit from 1xx underscore zero. The question is, should the government be mandated to provide you a girlfriend? Yes. And there's a little bit. There's a little bit of context, but yeah. I think we all know the answer is yes. No, I don't need it. Uh, perfect. I mean, you can say it anyways, but I don't need it. <laughs> context is. Now this may seem like joke, but at first, uh, this is a real video on YouTube, and I mentioned it to one of my friends, and we got into a heated debate uh, if the government should provide people with girlfriends. I think they shouldn't, and yeah, I know it seems like a joke at first, but we actually got into a legit debate over this, and let me hear some of your opinions about this. Yeah, so I know what you're going to say. You're going to say it's a joke. You're going to say my anecdote about having a girlfriend be mandated by the by the government <laughs> just sounds like a joke to you. It's not. It's not at all. This it's is not a at joke. all. No it's, jokes in fact, here. My girlfriend in the back, you know her. Uh, mm-hmm. She was given to me by government. Uh, Thank you, government. M- actually, during the shutdown, government s- solely focused on handing out girlfriends. That was yeah. pretty chill of them. They uh, shut down the whole government, but they tripled the the number of people working for the Provide Males with Girlfriends uh, <laughs> Foundation. Yeah. 
association. You know, my girlfriend in the back, she's she's just tops. Government handed her to me as a as an early birthday present. Boy, am I thankful. I wrote them thank you card. It was such a sweet little thing for them to do for me. Thank you, what government. Do you... <laughs> thank you um, government. Should they? Yes. The answer is yes. Um, yes? Yeah. Is this a for real or are you, are you messing with me? No, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, here's my reasoning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. They should. That's very. That's that's <laughs> exactly as much reasoning as I needed for an answer that you've given me. Should the government mandate you to have a girlfriend? Should they mandate you to have a girlfriend? No. Should there be an opt-in process for you to get a girlfriend? Yes, absolutely. Um, question using: Should they? Uh, should girls volunteer to be in the program, and should they match you up based on all the information they have? Um, on you and how they track everything about you and know exactly who you are, I think they could be the perfect matchmaker, truly. This is a very important thing to mention because if you didn't already know this, you know how when we reach a certain age as guys, we're forced into like being a part of the draft just in the long shot that something happens. Yep. Uh, girls are actually forced into uh, relationship um, promotion for the government where when they hit 18 years or older, the government has full rights over who they can and cannot be with because they because they know more about them than they know about themselves exactly that's yeah. just uh yeah facts um it's actually called uh myspace and it's really odd that it shut down because it was working so well before and then as soon as this thing called facebook came up uh people realized that they just wanted to be friends with everyone yeah <laughs> 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 That's a good reaction. Thanks. All right, question. <clears throat> this is from uh, username your mom. Oh. Uh-huh. Yep. If your friend squeals a lot, how do you break it to them that they aren't funny? <laughs> so there's a couple assumptions here. Uh, one, your friend isn't funny. Sorry. S- stop um, being friends with the pig from from, from charlotte's web man stop being friends with the pig from anything because all of them squeal i guess but they all um, squeal and it's very rude to just look at an animal that's making its natural given noise and be like wow you're so not funny <laughs> i mean uh i guess then i'll add in the givens here the assumptions um it is a human that is squealing well not if your mom's a pig oh <laughs> That's wow, that was really well done. Think Thank about you. that one. Go back 15 seconds in this podcast, <laughs> listen to it, realize how good of a joke Zane made right there. Since the username of the person who asked the question is your mom. So, if your friend squeals a lot, how do you break uh-huh. it to them that they aren't funny? The thing that's really getting me here is the, is the situation is the that pig. we're in. It's the pig, isn't it? It's the pig. It's <laughs> Okay, ready? get off Take the, the farm. Pig. All right, get so you're going to manifest the pig on top of your brain right now just pull it out like the pensive does you know albus dumbledore with his little <laughs> wand and you're gonna put it into the memory well and away it goes no more pig Humans all right perfect here. all right well the problem is just where are we as humans is are we at a com are they saying just oh when we're out somewhere and a joke happens they their laugh is a squeal but somehow you never it, heard a squeal before no i'm just my my scenario here is when they say that they're not funny is it like they heard a joke and their laugh is just a squeal but like while they're squealing it just ruins your day is that oh. what we're getting at like they're just like yeah, wow just your laugh isn't friend. funny or are they separate like wow you you have a squealing laugh but also you've you are the worst joke teller I've ever met. Yeah, I wish I had a little more context because that's literally it. I, I'm, I'm wondering, are they squealing at their own joke? And uh, maybe maybe the end of this is uh, this squealing thing that's bothering you so badly that you have to remind them that they aren't funny is just the tip of the iceberg for the fact that you just actually don't enjoy them. Sorry. Whoa, whoa, we are a friendly therapist style podcast here i'm here to help people zane i don't know what you're talking about (laughs) i'm bringing the hard truth i'm here i'm here to help and here's how we do this all right Mm -hmm. you fight fire with fire they squeal you squeal you squeal twice as loud but like very obviously in their face and then look at them while you they if they're like are you making fun of me just say nah nah i've just no i was just after after all the years I finally get why it's so funny. I, <laughs> I, finally, it <laughs> I finally understand where you're coming from. And then you just start going, wee, wee. <laughs> like the pig in the commercial. <laughs> wee, 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 wee. 
every and time they do the slightest squeal in this laugh that they definitely can't control in any way, <laughs> you just start making incessant pig noises. And now we're back on pigs. <laughs> Welcome back, Memory. I pulled Wait, you back, back on from pigs. The... I I have no recollection of talking about pigs beforehand. Oh, you're right. Hold on. Now take your wand and grab right. it from the pensive, the one that looks like the pig. <laughs> Um, oh. The memory that looks like a pig floating around in the pool. Okay, mm-hmm. but um, <clears throat> let's see. I mean, how do you break it to them? That could be one way. That's the very mean way. Mm-hmm, you could say, course. darling, you're just not doing it. Oh, it just no, now they're in a relationship. Working. Oh, gosh. No, <laughs> no it's just a, it's an endearing term Okay. Um, in this scenario. It could be a relationship. I don't know. But and we'll just assume it's they're just close. Um, darling, you, this isn't your niche. Squealing just isn't the thing that's going to put you over the top. And it's out there. It's somewhere. You'll find it. I'm sure you will. And I believe in who you are. But the squealing thing, it's just not yours. Some people can pull off snapbacks. Will can't. But um, the squealing is just not your thing. <laughs> you could try snapbacks. That might be the thing to put you over snapbacks the top. Snapbacks might be your thing. It might be. You know what? You Snapbacks might be all the rage for you. Maybe you could go to the farm and wear snapbacks. See what the uh, see what the uh, farmers think. If they say, "Wow, you're really rocking that snapback today." Also, we found a new person to squeal for us. His name is I'm a pig, and uh, I, mean, I don't know how to break this to you. And you could be like, "Nah, you know what? It's cool. I've moved on. I'm a snapbacks kind of guy now." And you know what? Happy ending to the story. You're happy. The farmer's happy. The pig's happy. And, you're, and you found your thing. Yeah wholesome answer for a wholesome question it's a whole right. family advice type of thing now yeah you had a question for us i do have a really good question and it well, is that's too bad i wanted to say hold on real quick <laughs> since we're at the middle of our podcast um really quick uh you know just some middle of podcast stuff which is uh thank you so much for listening this far uh uh we are so thankful to have you here and listening and we just love that we have the opportunity to be here doing this we have so much fun with it um uh, no matter where you're listening to this, um, it is something that we are just like greatly benefited by, and it's even help more helpful if you do stuff like downloading and rating and reviewing just as a small podcast. You can find us on YouTube, iTunes, Apple Podcast, or uh, officially now Spotify, which we just got up to as the day that we are recording this, which is awesome. Uh, that is incredibly helpful, and most importantly, Word of mouth is just the way that podcasts get spread, especially as small podcasts. That is something that we just um, cannot stress enough. Like, tell your friends, uh, walk up to them in coffee shops and be, hey, have you heard of this? Because it's pretty cool. And maybe you know the people because you've asked questions at this point, and uh, you can just take their phones from them and subscribe and rate and review for them real quick. Also, keep sending us questions. This is awesome. I love that we get able to do this. It's just so cool. We also have uh, a couple social media accounts that we uh, use in order to have things sent in to us and just give you updates for when uh, episodes come out. Uh, We have Instagram and Twitter, um, and we also have a... uh, an email that you can send us questions to the the email is save your bacon podcast at gmail.com yep and, and the twitter and instagram go ahead yeah yeah the instagram and twitter are both zane and will and you can use the hashtags zane and will or the hashtag save your bacon to make sure that we find your questions much much easier uh throughout everything that we get sent or you could probably dm us still that's also a very easy way to do it email is probably the best way to do it right now but still whatever works for you works for us and it can be questions that you found on the internet that you're like hey i'd love to actually get an answer to this or i thought this was hilarious and i'd love to hear your guys's take on this or it can be your own thing and you can make up your own username you can choose to be anonymous you can choose to use your real name whatever you want because if you use your real name we're just going to shout you out on the show and that's going to be awesome um but speaking of uh, how awesome you guys are, uh, we are already up after two episodes to five ratings on iTunes, which doesn't sound like a lot at all, but it feels super great. It really does to just know that uh, we're already off to some kind of a great start within the first two weeks, now three weeks when this comes out. And genuinely none of that is possible without anybody that's listening to this podcast and reviewing it and sharing it and sending in questions because the entire show is us talking about all of you guys so without this show we couldn't be doing 
uh, anything that we're doing and we couldn't be enjoying this as much as we are because that's all thanks to you guys so keep doing everything that you're doing every little bit that you do for us we appreciate so much and in the long run you know that we're going to be giving stuff back we're going to be doing uh the, the goal in the long long run is like live shows at some point maybe merchandise or whatever in the long run that'd be great but this is all gonna start with the few of you guys and we already know we're not gonna forget the people that started us at where we are yeah sweet give me that question all right you want a really good question here's a really bad question this comes from reddit user <laughs> away eez and uh, the question is, what makes a louder noise? Or what's more emphasized? And here, they, they're going to oh. say this. Is it a lowercase e with an exclamation mark? Or is it a capital E with no <laughs> exclamation mark? <laughs> which one is more emphasized or which Dude, one is louder? Which... <laughs> all right, both, all right. both of are those you... are the questions. That is okay. I just want to clarify. That is both the question. What both makes a louder noise, or what's more emphasized? Because this is very important, and I'm asking this question because I really want to know the answer. Do you have any takes on this? All right. When I see, all right, I'm just gonna tell you guys real quick. When I see uppercase e, I think e. When I see <laughs> lowercase e with an exclamation mark, I think e. <laughs> So, in case you're wondering, that was Zane backing very far away from his mic before yelling it. Uh, I laid down on my bed to scream E. Yeah. The, so what it's what it looks like to me is it looks like the difference between a man right up in your face saying it as sternly and as just stoically as he possibly can, just like as a like a gorilla grunt, just E, and then. E, lowercase e with an exclamation mark to me is a guy that's like a block down or like if you were if you were on the beach at like the other end of the beach and he's got his, he's waving his hands at you like over here and whatnot and then he puts his hands around his mouth as like a megaphone and he just goes hey e <laughs> and that's like the whole he doesn't need it to be loud well, he needs it to be loud but he doesn't want it to be loud sort of thing. yeah like lowercase oh, e so with maybe no... that's it yeah and we can't i don't know if we can do e with an exclamation mark because i'm pretty sure that's already a magazine and i don't know if that's allowed to be <laughs> emphasized any more than it already is it's probably not trademarked we'll just trademark it now all right we're gonna uh, trademark I'll... e exclamation yeah. mark I'll just right, quick perfect. trademark it before this uh, this episode gets released. Um, and just to also add on that really quick, we're also going to trademark lowercase e with an exclamation mark, so we uh, have both. No, that's also a good idea. Um, my take on this is that um, the big E, mm -hmm. I see a handsome, well-dressed man right in your face. All right, just but what about you. the question? <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't know a proper response when you do things like that. It leaves me in a place of disarray. Um, so when I think of an uppercase E, I see a handsome, well-dressed man, and he's standing right in front of me, and he has a pleasant, <laughs> and, no, an, a neutral-smelling breath as he just says to me, E, and he just does it with a plain face. Now, when I think of um, a lowercase E with an exclamation mark, I think of a small person and when i say small person i don't mean any type of regular person i mean <laughs> a person whose dimensions have been shrunk by about 10 times the normal size we're talking a 14 inch tall person with regular dimensions um wait a minute who do you mean like charlie and the chocolate factory pull him out of the tv style stuff going on yes no it's that's a very good analogy thank you um for those who can't see the wild hand motions I'm making to describe this. Um, and you're just sitting at your desk as I am right now and just kind of climbs up just from who knows where behind and goes, E! <laughs> climbs up from behind something on your desk. Well, I mean, you just know. from behind the desk, from like the wall area that you plug in your computer and your lamp and your and your diffuser, small man charger <laughs> and your small man charger to charge your yeah. small man no this is it's, a man you haven't seen before it's a distressed e and it may be the dimensions also shrunk his vocabulary and he's <laughs> <I've> <laughs> and that he has lost 25 of his letters and of the alphabet you know and he comes up after climbing up and goes e 
and it's a very distressed but small e. So that was my roundabout way of saying that that is the one that is more emphasized. It's more distressing. Does that make sense? It's more of a distress single signal. You're not just going off of how loud it is. You're going off of how distressed it is. All right. I it's you. more the emphasis, I think, that matters in this. Because I think the E in proportion may be louder because the man is much closer to you. But right, well, the small makes, yeah. man wants to be louder. So to answer your question, which we rarely do on this podcast, louder noise, capital E, no exclamation mark, more emphasized, lowercase e, exclamation mark. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm fine with that. Yeah. That's a good answer. Sounds, Sounds good. good. I got another of you on it. We can do one more. Lay it on me. This also comes from Annie Wagner. Thank you, Annie Wagner. Thank you. It says, my roommate told me that the coffee maker wasn't working, um, but then I found out later she forgot to plug it in. How do I sweet? How, sorry. How do I sweetly tell her that she forgot to plug it in? So that's a given. It has to be sweet, Zane. All right. Squeal very elegantly is the easiest answer that I've got for you. <laughs> no, we're talking we're talking sweetly here. So you just gotta you gotta speak on sweet on level. Is that sweet? <laughs> sweet. Give me you some gotta have the, that the sweet? infliction at the end. <laughs> I think what you do if you really want to be sweet, then I'm gonna give you a real answer before I give you my my actual answer. Real answer. Just pretend you bought a second coffee machine and wake them up in the morning with a nice cup of coffee and say, hey, don't sweat it. I bought another one. Here, have something to top your day off or start your day off real quick. Here, That's just sweet. Sip on this. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Like, you know? hey, you're, hey, I checked it out. It is busted. So I got you a new one. Yeah, that's going to sound wonderful. And you know what? You're also, if you just say, like, by the way, by the way, I really want you to know on the side, this is an early birthday gift for you, so I'm not going to get you anything else. And <laughs> That's less sweet. And the, no, the reason that you mentioned this is because now they've got a match coffee machine for your birthday present. Oh, I was going to say, then you get them an actual birthday present, which is also sweet. Oh, you could also get them an actual birthday present, and it's, and it's the busted coffee machine. And after all these years of them thinking, oh, man, what if it was just unplugged the whole time? And yeah, and then you the plug it in, one. and you're yeah. like, boy, the magic was in friendship all along. <laughs> in, in, in friendship That's that phrase, and coffee right? beans. I'm really good at phrases and getting the all the words. The magic was in friendship all along. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I read that on a on a t sh- t shirt in the Virgin Islands once. <laughs> <laughs> okay, really quick. I received a gift from Zane, and it was a little plaque um, right at graduation when I graduated high school. And it, it was just a little plaque that he said he got from some sort of vacation or something, which I thought was the Virgin Islands, but it I was an idiot be. and I got it wrong. No, it and might be. And it might be. And it says on it, where there's a will, there I want to be in it. <laughs> that there wasn't in there. I just messed it up. It said, where there's a will, I want to be in it. And I, me and my 18-year-old brain, stopped laughing, didn't get it at all. So the sweet way uh, that you're going to fix this problem, going roundabout to Annie, um, you're going to lie to them. And you're going to yeah. tell them, hey, this is a different coffee maker I got you, but this one works. Um, and it's already plugged in. Mm-hmm. And every time they forget to plug it in, you got to tell them you got a new one. And you're going to need to clean it really well so they think it's new. Or tell them you got it from uh, a pawn shop that was the exact same model. There's a very important part to this story, Annie, that I did not mention. And I'm going to have to mention it right now. You're in the long haul on this one, all right? You looking at me? Are you looking at me, Annie? The thi- Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? The thing that you're going to have oh, to do gosh. here. Oh, gosh. <laughs> this is an audio <laughs> medium. <laughs> this is the thing. Uh, everybody knows that when this podcast plays, a hologram of me pops up in front of them. That is the now, future the thing, podcasting. The thing is, during this long haul, during this lie that you've put on, the long con, her not plugging it in, so it's busted, so you got to buy a new coffee machine. Every time your roommate doesn't plug something in and thinks it's broken instead, you're going to have to replace it. Everything. If she unplugs the TV and thinks the TV's broken, you're going to have to get a new TV, and then you're going to have to find somewhere to put the obviously still working TV that she will never find it. Soon enough, your house is just going to, your apartment, whatever, is going to just fill up with the just five different toasters and then six different waffle makers, and it's going to be a whole thing. I think the biggest part of this whole endeavor is going to be the day that she unplugs the fridge 
and then doesn't plug it back in and thinks the fridge is busted, you're going to have to find a way to get that fridge out of the place without her ever noticing that you replaced it with a new fridge. Yeah, this is an expensive con, obviously, but friendship is priceless, so um, that is our advice to you. What was what was the uh, the slogan before? If you can remember it, I'll be very impressed. The magic was in the friendship all along. There you go. So screw the money part. Also, you don't even have to worry about the money part. I'm sure someone in your uh, local city area is going to be dropping uh, money on you soon enough because of that hipster thing that I mentioned. Yeah, all of us definitely didn't skip over that part, including me. I definitely didn't tune out for that. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for getting this far, guys. It's been a great time. Uh, we had fun. Hope you had fun, too. Send us some questions. Give us some rating reviews. Uh, my name is Will. My name is Zane. And this is Save Your Bacon Podcast. Just remember, the magic is in the friendship all along. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night.